Hello, I'm the Nostalgia Critic Guy. Remember it so you don't have to. When the movie Batman Returns came out, people mostly had one reaction. The hell was that? But they also had another reaction. Catwoman was pretty cool. And thus a movie based on the anti-hero was in development forever. Tim Burton went back and forth on the project, Mitchell Pfeiffer went back and forth on the project, scripts were rewritten and retooled, until it finally reached the perfection that only years and years of development can give us. Oh, <laughs> just look at the costume of our main character. Oh god, let's just get this over with. This film not only tops a lot of worst comic book films of all time lists, but it also tops a lot of worst films of all time period lists. And you can definitely see why. It is a special kind of bad. The kind of bad that the main characters from the producers would put together as an intentional flop to cash in on some sort of money scheme. Yeah. That bad. I'd say let's review it, but really, this is more like a study. A study in asking the questions, how, why, and... No, those are enough. Let's go ahead and study the epic failure that is Catwoman. It all started on the day that I died. We open with our main character deceased, obviously trying to symbolize the movie's ability of being dead on arrival. The day that I died was also the day I started to live. But we'll of course get to that later as we see the evil corporation our main character works for, Makeup! But they're trying to hide that better as the husband and wife owners of the company, the wife played by Sharon Stone, are stepping down from being its spokespeople because they just fucking look evil. It has been a magnificent 15 years, but we have decided to choose a new face to represent Eileen. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, quick word of advice to anyone joining a large corporation. If your bosses laugh like this... <laughs> EVIL! Or how about if your performance creates the unforgivable sin of making Rupert Everett look subtle? This is not even close to what I wanted. I know I can fix it. I do not reward incompetence. I have no idea why I expected your art to show better taste than your wardrobe. You totally put me off my dick in caviar party! I bet you didn't even know we threw those, did you? But she's just too timid to fight back for herself, as our main character named Patience... Yes, our kind, quiet innocent is named Patience. The same as naming these characters meanie, broody, or evil. Still manages to get to his pity as he allows her to turn in the project tomorrow by midnight. But that's pretty tough, seeing how she can't even tell those hardcore parties with pink light bulbs to keep their music down. Excuse me, hi. Do you think you could just maybe turn the music down just? You better pray this isn't creating contrast for later. It's also difficult when other people's pets like to impossibly place themselves in dangerous situations so that others would try to save them instead of doing something sensible like calling the fire department. Hey, bro! Easy. Whatever it is you're thinking, whatever it is you're feeling, it's not worth it. You understand? Now look, I'm a cop. Maybe I can help. I know you read the reviews to the call! I'd be depressed too! <laughs> so the cop saves her, but finds she's in a hurry to return to her everyday mundane job. So, every day that this guy is in the exact same spot as before. Is the railing his desk? But the cop manages to find her and returns her wallet. Tom. Oh. God, that is such a good name. Tom Lone. Rhymes with cone, phone, bone. <laughs> Not that rhyming's all that important. Just be in my cubicle. <laughs> Hello. Just let me know, Hallie, if you want me to be more awkward or not as attractive as you. Is this yours? This is nice. Thanks. Yeah, it kind of reminds me of early Chagall. Elegant, but whimsical. <laughs> you know, not enough cops use the words elegant and whimsical. I like to see it brought up in more police meetings. Tradition of the old Dutch masters. I'm impressed. Don't be. I noticed all the art in your apartment, so I googled at the office. <laughs> Aw, well that's alarmingly creepy. I wanted to apologize to you about this morning, thinking that you were a jumper. I was hoping I could make it up to you by taking you to coffee. So he apologizes to her for saving her life. 
and thus invites her out on a date to make up for it. Have to wear that leather outfit last night. I got you for your birthday. Remember, I will never, ever, ever wear that leather outfit. Yo, oh, I hope this is creating more contrast. Because if it isn't, that line will be awkward and totally pointless. But if it is, oh boy! One obnoxious 90s edit later, we see that our messenger to drop off her design has canceled. So she has to drop it off at Obvious Evil headquarters herself. I don't care that the FDA never saw the, the headaches and the, the, the nausea and the, the fainting spells. Those okay, is it me or is the editing in this movie out of control? When it has nothing to cut to, it will literally cut to itself! I don't care how short your audience's attention span is, only cut when you have something to cut to! It's like a boxer who has nobody to fight, so he just hits himself. But she stumbles across the plan of Corella Jane Lynch, whose new makeup line will start damaging the skin if it's not continually applied. She tries to escape through the sewers, but luckily the henchman who doesn't work there knows the exact button to push in order to flush her out. So she falls into the river, yet somehow ends up on some rocks far away from the river, the water just grab her. Where we see the embarrassingly bad animation left over from Puss in Boots comes in and quite literally breathes new life into her. I'm not even making that up, it literally breathes new life into her. I suddenly have a need to incorporate horrible cat jokes into my life. Oh, and I'm not kidding. Everything she does the following day is related to some kind of bad cat humor. She sleeps on a shelf, lands on all fours, hisses at dogs, eats several cans of tuna, and I shit you not, this is a real scene of what happens when someone gives her catnip. idea of what Catwoman should be. Not paid writers and directors. No, I take it back. Third graders read comics, so even they would have a better understanding what makes a better Catwoman than you. Jury Newmar would be telling you to calm down. Crazy cat ladies would be calling you crazy cat lady. I is this really like your best foot forward? Years and years of rewrites and fine tuning and this is honestly what you've come up with? We haven't even got to the dumbass costume yet, and already I'm embarrassed for you. I'm embarrassed to look at you. It's like that kid that joins the football team, even though he's like that big, but you show your support anyway, but that turns out you shouldn't have because he's in the hospital with five fractured ribs, and he's like, why'd you support me? Why'd you show your support? It's like, I don't know. I saw a movie where a woman sniffed catnip, and it fucked me up. Patience has no memory of being drowned, which is never really explained, but after this scene you could say she's a porcupine and I wouldn't question it. But she does remember that she forgot her date with her cop friend and leaves an apology coffee. Her life also seems to have a little bit more bite to it. Hey! I think someone's cooking up some contrast payoff! But the contrast doesn't stop there. She gets on that leather outfit she said she would never put on and starts living up to her cat burglar name by stealing stuff. But it seems she now has a split personality as in the morning she does remember stealing them and actually returns it with the word sorry written on it. She finally wants to know what the hell is going on, so she returns the cat named Midnight to its owner and asks, what the hell is going on? You wrote this? I was a professor for 20 years. The goddess passed. The miles are sacred to past. They're her messengers. Oh, and here's a fun game. Bet yourself $10 that you can listen to this explanation of who she is without cracking a smile. You follow your own desires. This is both a blessing and a curse. You are a cat woman, incredibly heightened. So I'm not patience anymore? You are patience. 
And you are Catwoman. You just lost ten dollars, didn't you? So as she shows all the Photoshop pictures of history, she says that she has been given a gift that's been passed on through the ages. And that she has tried to prove this theory as a professor in the past, but nobody has ever believed her. Why? Male academia. <laughs> I'm sorry, what was the reasoning again? Male academia. <laughs> okay, look, lady. Um, I'm not gonna act like there isn't some double standard bullshit going on in the world. Uh, women getting paid less than men, that's bullshit. Uh, men sleeping around with women being called a player, but a woman sleeps around with men, she's called a slut, that's bullshit. But when you go around with your theories that there are in fact cat women who exist today and have existed years in the past because the spirits of the Egyptian gods are in these little tiny felines going around who breathe on dead women, bringing them back to life, a sort of cat woman zombie, if you will, who now exist and fight crime even to this day. Why do you think nobody believed you again? Male academia. Eh, wrong! It's because you're fucking crazy! Male academia. Suck my sexist, women-bashing, chauvinistic, stripper-watching, porn-loving, overly-paid dick! If this movie's all women or power, how come in the next scene she's dressed like a poster a 13-year-old boy would hang over his bed and jerk off to? Yeah, look at that thing. It looks even dumber close up, doesn't it? I can't tell you how it looks on her far away because I never see it on her far away. Instead, they place it on her CGI puppet, which makes me keep checking the TV to make sure I haven't put on a rerun of fucking reboot. Who could that be? We see Catwoman goes inside a club thinking she can find the answers of who tried to kill her. What can I do for you? White Russian. No ice. Hold the vodka. Hold the Kahlua. I'M A CAT! She locates one of the thugs that tried to kill her that night and tries to get some info out of him. The other night you killed somebody. She was a nice girl. Why? <laughs> oh wait, gee, let me try and guess what the next line is. Uh, Dog ate your biscuit? Cat got your tongue. Oh yeah, yeah, that seemed much more logical. So, he tells her about the secret headquarters, she goes there, and then leaves. Odd. But wait a second, our cop friend might be on the lead about who stole and returned those jewels from the other night. Well, there are similarities. Shape of the S, harsh stroke of the R's. Are you fucking kidding me? You took it to a handwriting expert? A handwriting? Look at them! Ray Charles with a fucking blindfold! I could tell it was the same person! But hey, don't let this get in the way of your date, where a carousel breaks and she uses all her flips and kicks to save a little kid from falling. No, oh, wait a minute. Could this and the handwriting point to her possibly being the culprit? Well, I'm not sure how you did it, but... I'm impressed. Guess not! No, clearly he needs to see her do it. Like this encounter at Cirque des de Susical where she's trying to get more answers. When our cop friend comes across the Catwoman who's the same height, same skin color, exact same voice, and yet really fucking miraculously still can't tell who it is. Yeah, look at him trying to take off that mask. Oh, you'll figure it out someday. Up oh, too late, she got away. Oh well, better luck next time. I'm off on a date with my cat-like girlfriend. It's good to get away from that criminal I'm chasing and being hooked up with a completely different person who hates the rain like a cat, eats sushi like a cat. She even makes purring sounds while having sex with you because guess what, you fucking moron? She's a goddamn cat. Uh, can you just promise me that there's a little blonde-haired niece going around actually solving the crime for him? It wouldn't be any more far-fetched than the rest of this movie, and by God, I just have to have some hope in humanity. Sharon Stone's evil plan is revealed, which is the exact same evil plan in the first ten minutes. Nothing's changed, yet we spent an hour and a half trying to reveal it. And she frames Catwoman for the murder of her husband. But Inspector Clouseau finally figures out it was her the whole time! How? 
Well, through his brilliant deductive reasoning and high-tech CSI gadgetry, they took the lipstick mark that was left on his cheek during the fight sequence and compared it with the lipstick mark she left on a glass when they were dating, and a DNA and pattern decoder matched them up perfectly, thus deducing that they are, in fact, the same person. Wow, you made that so much more complicated than it needed to be! Hey genius, don't tell anyone, but I have a sneaking suspicion that one of these guys is stealing burgers. I haven't figured out which, but shh, 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 we'll find the culprit. So even though she's thrown in jail, she slips through the bars and makes her way to Sharon Stone's hideout, where she tries to stop her evil makeup from taking over the world. And you know, saying that out loud makes me realize just how fucking sexist this empowering women movie sounds. Male academia. <laughs> But get this, because she's used the makeup for so long, it makes her skin indestructible. I can't be hurt. Be a lean. You stop using it, and your face disintegrates. <laughs> and if you keep using it, skin like living marble. So, wait, she's created this makeup where the more you use it, the more powerful you become? And all you have to do is keep using it to make you stronger? I'm sorry, what's the downside to this? Oh, people will rot if you stop using it. Well, okay, keep fucking using it. Where's the problem? Why are you marketing this in cosmetics? You should be marketing this to the military. Male academia. <laughs> oh, I guess the problem is she's a fucking liar. The makeup is clearly not indestructible as it apparently starts coming off. <laughs> oh, and apparently indestructible doesn't also include falling off a building. Yeah, that's apparently it's kryptonite too. Kind of false advertising, but whatever. Catwoman is proven innocent, but finds she can't stay with her boyfriend because... Last 10 minutes of Spider-Man explanation. And I cry for anyone who didn't get an immediate refund before the credits started rolling. Let's face it, there's nothing any actress could bring to it to make it work. I mean, when the script calls for you to rub catnip on your face, how well can you seriously portray that? It's over the top and goofy, but I think that just adds to the insanity that the film has already gotten across. I mean, this film is beyond bad. Like, head-scratchingly, how on earth could anybody take any sentence in this seriously bad? It's a marvel! It can barely be put into words. Nothing in any realm of reality could possibly save it from the bad writing and directing that consumed every frame of this picture. Yeah, it is that bad. I'm a nostalgia critic. I remember it so you don't have to. Male academia. <laughs>